intake. Um, this is part of healthy protein being part of a healthy diet. Um, there are many other ways to get protein in addition to or instead of meat. Um, a lot of research that's come out of extensive uh, review and meta-analyses is showing there are serious health consequences to eating meat as well. And moving towards a plant-based diet is a major step forward for both health and the environment. So there are many people who are thinking along these lines as well. Um, one is shown here. This is the chair of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So obviously an expert on the issue of climate change, a vegetarian himself. And he recommends uh, taking an article taken from a, a quote in the Guardian newspaper. In terms of immediacy, in terms of something we could do now today, and feasibility, something that it's possible to do, Reduced meat consumption is clearly the most attractive opportunity. Give up meat for one day a week initially and decrease it from there. So advocating decreased consumption, this could be both um, smaller and more reasonable portion sizes and choosing more meat-free meals. This would actually have a really big impact. So research that just came out this summer has shown that even reducing meat consumption while still consuming meat has a big impact on your carbon footprint. So what's shown here is several categories. These are Heavy meat eaters defined as eating more than 100 grams of meat a day. Low meat eaters were defined as eating less than 50 grams a day. Um, pescatarian people who eat fish. Vegetarians, people who eat dairy and eggs, but not other animal products. And vegans who eat no animal products at all. So first, let's look at decreasing meat consumption. It's possible to have a really big impact on your carbon footprint from still consuming meat in moderation, but decreasing the amount or the, the frequency of which you consume. So here they went, the units here are in uh, pounds, this is a UK paper, but 15.8 um, pounds to 10 pounds, so a really substantial reduction. What if we want to go even further? Uh, Lord Nicholas Stern, who's been involved in several economic reviews related to climate change, has, uh, again quoting from it, well, sorry about that, um, another newspaper article, um, So meat is a wasteful use of water and creates a lot of greenhouse gases. It puts enormous pressure on the world's resources. A vegetarian diet is better. So that's stated pretty clearly. And that's what we see on the right hand side of this graph, that vegetarians had half the carbon footprint of heavy meat eaters. So comparing this bar and the bar over here, that's a really big cut. Um, Kind of surprisingly, maybe, there wasn't such a big carbon difference between people who choose to eat fish and vegetarians. So the biggest bang for your buck if you're going to limit your dietary consumption is limiting meat and especially beef. Um, and if you really want to go the extra mile, of course, you can see that vegans have a further reduction. But again, the biggest reduction in carbon footprint is from limiting or reducing the amount of meat in. Um, so, a recent study, again, uh, also came out this year, shows that this is not just about individuals uh, making personal choices, although that's an important part of the equation, but that we really have to think systematically about the role of food consumption in climate change. And this study concluded that reduced ruminant meat, so uh, cows and beef being an example of ruminant meat, and dairy consumption will be indispensable for reaching the two degrees Celsius warming target with a high probability, unless unprecedented advances in technology take place. So it's actually essential that we think about dietary changes and improvements if we're serious about climate change. I want to close with a couple exciting models that I can recommend to look into more if you're interested. One was this Stockholm Food uh, Eat Forum, which happened here in May. And it, I don't know how well you can see the graph, I'm sorry, but what this is showing is this food forum is meant to be the intersection between sustainability food and health. So you can check on their website, there are a lot of uh, what they call Eat Talks, which are similar to TED Talks, um, of a lot of people doing very good work, and both from the health and sustainability side, looking for intersections of a better way forward. Um, there's also increasing academic research on what does it mean to have a diet that's both healthy and sustainable. This was a recent white paper um, that looks 
more broadly than we've talked about here today. So not only environmental issues, which we've been focusing on, we touched a little bit on the nutrition issues, but also including food-related health, so the use of chemicals in food, um, social and ethical aspects of how food is produced and distributed, and economics and food supply, so um, access to food is really important, livelihoods and jobs. So we have to be part of a bigger conversation and a bigger picture here. But I want to close by saying that all of us vote with our forks three times every day, so the choices that we make really matter about the food that we eat, and I see this as really essential to both having better communities, um, better lives where we're sharing our food and our families and friends. Um, the conversations that happen around the table are often the most important and the most memorable. And the impact that we're having on the environment is one of the biggest things that we do every day that we eat. So I encourage you to think about it. And I'll, I'll close by saying, if we're serious about addressing climate change, then we have to get serious about producing meat consumption. Thank you very much. <laughs>